Hi, and welcome back to Football Made Simple. A top of the table encounter took place at the Bayer Arena when Bayer Leverkusen hosted Bayern Munich. Nagelsmann and Bosch's sides were second and third respectively, so many expected a close encounter. But in the end, Bayern Munich were in a league of their own, coming away 5-1 winners thanks to a Lewandowski double, Thomas Müller and a Nabry double, whilst Patrick Schick scored the consolation for Leverkusen. The XG shows how far ahead Bayern were, and the XG time map shows domination from start to finish. But how exactly were the Bavarians able to be so dominant? Let's take a look. A quick reminder of the formations used by both sides, as seen on the OneFootball app. OneFootball will get you match updates, formation updates, as well as player and team stats, and so much more. And the best part is, you can get it absolutely free through the sponsored link in the description below. And if you like this video, hit subscribe to see this upcoming video taking a broader look at Nagelsmann's reign at Bayern Munich. Let's first look at Bayern in possession. As usual, Bayern looked to build short from the goal kick, with the centre-backs providing options wider of the goalkeeper at goal kicks, whilst in open play they were narrower. And Bayer Leverkusen were initially looking to press high to win the ball. Wirtz generally stayed deeper, trying to cover one of the pivots, and an additional man could join him to create a 2 vs 2 in this region and increase the odds of winning the ball, leading to some good situations. But of course, if they pressed in this shape, Schick would have been 2 vs 1 down, making it almost impossible to win the ball back. But if Wirtz had pushed high to be the second pivot, Leverkusen could have been badly overloaded in the midfield. And as we'll discuss, Bayern's backline are good enough to find these penetrative passes. So instead, it was Musa Diaby off the right-hand side who looked to press Luca Hernandez and make it a 2. However, for the most part this was ineffective, as he wasn't always able to cut out the outlet option. In addition, if the ball went back to Neuer first, he could easily find the chip ball to Alfonso Davis, taking Diaby out of the game. But Nagelsmann's attacking structure was as interesting as ever. Sula is a natural centre-back, and he started at right-back. We saw on occasions, particularly if Leverkusen were pressing with one man up top, he could step in to temporarily be the second pivot. But for the most part, he acted as a third centre-back, and here's where we see a particularly Nagelsmann trait. Many teams over the past few years, such as Pep City, Klopp's Liverpool and Tuchel's Chelsea, attack with a 3-2-5 or a 2-3-5. But Nagelsmann chose as much as possible to have Kimmich as a single pivot instead, which would give Goretzka freedom to push high up early. So they'd have a minimum of two men looking to get between the lines in Müller and Goretzka. This could easily become three or four, particularly with Davis down the left-hand side pushing so high up that Sané could afford to come central. And importantly, the centre-backs, or Joshua Kimmich, were willing to attempt the line-breaking passes required into the men between the lines. So time and again, Bayern received the ball between the lines and could attack the centre-backs with men making runs ahead of them. Bayern remained adaptable. If the pressure was too high and Kimmich was tied up, then Goretzka could drop deeper to be the second option. And again, the overload between the lines was important, as even if a Leverkusen men went to close down Goretzka, it would leave the other 2 vs 1 against Müller and Sané. In fact, this leads to a Bayern goal. Bayern have their usual shape, with Sula deep and Davis high out of the picture, which allows Sané central. Goretzka has come deep to be the second pivot, and he draws a Leverkusen pivot, meaning that Müller is free between the lines. So, here you can see Müller receiving space and Davis wide means that when a midfielder comes to Müller, Sané is now free central. Sané can then receive and move into good space after the centre-back tried to cover, leading to the goal. Leverkusen looked to adapt in the second half, switching to a 5-3-2 to deal with the overload as they would now have three midfielders. Crucially, the extra centre-back also had enough freedom to be more aggressive in following a man between the lines who was looking to receive. Some quick points on Bayern's defence. When Leverkusen had the ball deep, Bayern were essentially in a dedicated 4-4-2 with Müller right alongside Lewandowski. And generally they were able to press the centre-backs with the forwards or sit a little deeper. Either way, they looked to make progression through the centre almost impossible 
as we can see in Leverkusen's attack. This was ideal because it unlocked Bayern's main ploy of forcing Leverkusen wide. Once the fullbacks did receive, Bayern launched an aggressive lateral press, with the winger pushing high, the forward cutting off a centre back, and the pivots shifting across to box in the fullback, leading to limited options. This leads to a goal. Leverkusen play the ball into the fullback, and Muller covers a pivot, whilst Lewandowski does the same to the centre back. Sane then engages with the pivot, also cutting off any easy option. This forces a sloppy pass and the region behind the fullback is attacked, leading to the goal. But the Bayern fullbacks could be vulnerable, as on a few occasions, when the Leverkusen wingers drop deep, the Bayern fullbacks look to remain touch tight to back up the lateral press, so space opened up behind them that could be exploited. But overall, as soon as Bayern went ahead, the game was essentially over, with clinical finishing and high chance creation meaning they were well deserved winners. After a first loss last season, they are now a single point above Dortmund and will look to continue with this momentum, but leave your thoughts down below in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, you may also enjoy the FMS Patreon. On Patreon, you'll get early access to videos, exclusive videos, as well as the ability to vote on various polls and so much more. It's a great way to support the channel and it is now cheaper than ever. All you have to do is head over to patreon.com slash footballmadesimple or press the card in the top right or the end card at the end of this video. And a special thanks to my patrons including Wale, Ricardo Caputa and Karl Kielberg. But that's all for today and remember, keep it simple.